Thank you, Governor. Isn't he wonderful? Inspirational. John Donahoe and the eBay team, thank you for being such gracious hosts today. And welcome to everyone. It's a very, very special day for us, and we're so glad you took the time to be here with us today. It means a lot to us. Our journey to here began millions of miles away on Mars. I was a professor at the University of Arizona, and I was trying to make Mars our second home, developing technologies so we can sustain life on Mars. Breathable air, water, heat, electricity, and fuels. If you had that, you can live anywhere. While I was working on that, the technology development was robust. Unfortunately, I couldn't say the same thing about the funding and the rockets, which I couldn't control. So it became an issue of impact, which is what I wanted to start this work on. After spending about a decade working on this, I had to look back. And I had to look back at our first home instead of our second home. While I was dreaming about Mars and Mars colonies, historically unprecedented things had happened on Earth. The few hundred million people that had stepped out of poverty and climbed the economic ladder around the world. And what did they all want? The same thing that we all want, more of everything. More resources, more water, more energy. And of course, they have a right to this. But we were trying to provide that in our old, unsustainable fashion. The unprecedented growth and demand simply said the ways of the past had to be changed, but we were not realizing that. It sent shivers down my spine as I thought about it. Why? If we just continued that way, we would be handing our children and their children a broken planet. It reminded me of the pale blue dot in the solar system that's called our only home. And the thought of handing our children and our grandchildren a broken planet and standing on the sidelines and complaining about it was not what I thought we should do. Just look at this picture. It's a composite image of world by night. That's what it's called, composite image of world by night. Each one of you will look at this picture and take your own messages. For me, it was really a composite image of two worlds a bright world and a dark world. It was an image of the world of haves and the world of have-nots. It was an image of people who had the opportunity for economic growth and people who just were denied the opportunity to climb that economic ladder. No pathway to economic growth. One in three humans Two billion people don't have access or affordable access to energy. The global population growth is expanding, and it's in that two billion population that it's growing faster than in the other part. Energy demands were exceeding, and without energy, they didn't have a passport to economic growth. My conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, was very simple. Way before we have to confront the environmental issues associated with this, the geopolitical and social impact that that would have if we didn't change the way of doing business was a very big deal. That was not acceptable. You can't conserve your way out of this problem. You can't drill your way out of this problem. You can't mine and burn your way out of this problem. We simply had to find a different way. Some saw this as a big crisis barreling down. 
we saw this as a call to our generation, a call to our generation to make an impact, an impact that can do good and make good. What did the world need? Accessible, affordable energy that is sustainable. That's what the world needed. Well, other industries have handled this problem of access and affordability and done well. Why can't we simply follow examples of success? What are those industries? We in this room know this very well. Computing provided access in places that we would have never dreamed 20 years ago people would have computers. Same thing with telephones. You can go into a fishing village in Bangladesh or you can go to the middle of Africa and find people walking around in a, with a cell phone. Why? It's the wireless. It's going from centralized to distributed. That made a very big difference. But for it to virally spread, it needed to be distributed, but it also needed two things, reliable and affordable. If you had that, the world will adopt. The world will, the world will have access. Is that bar sufficient for energy? Was our first question. The answer came out, simply no. The bar is slightly higher. And that bar is clean. It also had to be clean. Now you go, hmm? Why clean? Is it because you're an environmentalist? Is it because you're an altruist? Is it because of regulation? The answer is no. When you take a power plant that's hundreds of miles away, putting out dirty emissions, and bring that power plant to your backyard, either the dirty emissions have to go or you have to go.